So this is a, a very interesting um, task that I was, I was given, uh, and especially because uh, I'm speaking from a non-expert uh, uh, situation. So in fact, to expect from everybody that through only one mind I can retell what has happened today is, uh, is impossible and also unattainable. Uh, I also wanted to say something that, um, that uh, we had an idea, which we are not going to do, but let's let it be an idea, to actually, since the whole panel was moving from table to table to table, which I thought was actually brilliant, to actually have the remarks at the piano over there, uh, which is uh, sort of the biggest object brought in, in fact. Since I didn't bring anything, I, I wanted to kind of pull out the piano. Uh, interesting thing about it is that, in fact, it is a piano under the lock. So, in fact, it cannot be played, and uh, nor I do remember how to play anymore. But uh, let it be just an idea. So imagine me over there, uh, actually not playing music, uh, but in delivering notes. Uh, in some sense, this is how I'm left, left with that kind of interesting, um, as Spiros says, non-entity, uh, in a sense that uh, uh, there is another also uh, experiment uh, that I want to just bring up. And there is one image I would like to project, if, if it is possible. Uh, while I speak. So the experiment is known as the um, uh, uh, famous Schrodinger's paradox of a cat in a box. And uh, so I was going to make a metaphor by kind of playing my notes from the piano and think whether there is a cat in it. Because it is under the lock, we cannot open it. So in fact, the idea of the cat lives as being forever in that space. Uh, I'm, I'm telling that because of the, to kind of go, go back to the, to the issue of the non-entity that Spiros is bringing up that rings a different bell in myself of the kind of the practices that can really come out of this sort of innovations uh, in all of the disciplines that we had today. And I mean, uh, I don't want to say, I want to know when I go back to my studio what to do. It's not about that but sort of the ideas about the innovations and the ideas about um, uh, uh, practice, spatial practice. Um, this, you can just plug it in. So um, in order to do this, I'm going to do it very quick um, to kind of unpack the whole day for myself, uh, is to actually then maybe just use it as a forensic device. So I would like to start from the, from the end and in fact kind of go back to the to the beginning. And uh, the three things, uh, first of all, which I would like to filter them through, are the sort of all the established uh, elements of the forensics discourse, which Eyal has been talking about for a while, which is an object, an expert, and a medium. So in a way, almost if one could actually look at the three sessions, uh, one can actually kind of direct, directly pull them together as, as an object, expert, and a medium. And I would go first as a medium, expert, and then the object uh, situation. The, the image I wanted to just show, this is, I'm not gonna give you a lecture on this, is also something that connects, I think it connects to the non-entity and the, also the issue of the, of the um, forensics, uh, which is the issue of the descent of a refusal to renovate. And uh, also the second issue that has been brought up, especially in the last uh, session, uh, issue of, of um, exceptionality. And uh, exceptionality in a way that um, a small margin, uh, as, as Daimler was talking about common good, the small margin in fact needs to be preserved in order to influence the larger, um, larger discourse and larger thinking. This particular image, um, I'll take it off the screen, is um, somebody, uh, f um, it is from a small town called Kalesia in Bosnia and Herzegovina, close to a city called Tuzla. And a person who lives on the floor, which you see uh, untouched, refused to renovate his own floor, uh, even though the city renovates the rest. Um, so in a way, it is not entirely known who that is. The uh, person is outside of the country, and the motivations are not entirely known. We can notice a very big satellite dish exactly in the same apartment, much bigger than the other ones. Uh, so we can only conclude that what that dead cat 
or is it that or not, uh, is doing inside. If we look at a bit closer, uh, you can actually notice the traces of the, of the um, gunfire uh, in it, and which further complicates why would that not be done. Um, and also, but what is most fascinating for me here, and I think this is where the discourse really is, is the edge between the renovated and the unrenovated place which was done by the state. So the precision of the edge has become so acute and so basically executed to exactly show where the line, projected line of the inner space is on the outer space. So with this uh, kind of issue of non-entity, um, maybe let's just go back to um, through the, at least what I kind of uh, sensed uh, is, the, is the opening. Uh, uh, instead of closing remarks, I think it's better to have an opening in that sense. So. I, I was really moved by, um, by, by Spira's uh, presentation, especially on this issue of, that's why I pulled the image, of the non-entity and the opening, and as well as the um, kind of issue of, uh, second issue of humor as a shaker, shaking device. Uh, one could say that humor is crisis of reason in that sense, if I understand it like that, but the crisis well-crafted, or the sort of crisis used to, uh, to realign. Um, in that sense, um, it was also great to, um, I mean, really fascinating to listen to, to, um, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the story about Rilke and this sort of, I would see it as a sort of like an indecision, continuous indecision uh, in, um, in presenting sort of an evidence uh, uh, in, in, in his work and to kind of um, claim it as um, as that the animal, the anima, uh, sort of comes to that point of a sharp line, of a sharp line between what continues to be forensics and what continues to be fantastical, which we would say that fantastical is not part of forensics, right, at the moment. We must. Uh, so, um, so in that sense, um, that, that, I think that was, uh, I think, well, well crafted. Uh, and, and I can totally kind of... Um, understand all the issues and practices which are more about prevention, prevention and also the exchange, uh, like a line as a prevention, as demarcation, and uh, not as a warning, but maybe also as a warning, but in a sort of that practice becomes, gets the most precise one. So people who make straight edges are actually big experts uh, in that case for us. Uh, to, to kind of go, uh, and I'll do this kind of one by one, then we can discuss. I think that would be the best. Uh, to do. Uh, going backwards, um, as in forensics, the, the session before, uh, which I also made quite a lot of notes, um, uh, and uh, what actually, of course, really um, uh, was very striking for me in Arnon's, 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 Arnon's presentation is not also, of course, what he showed, but also what you said, that um, there has to be something called the light forensics. Um, the, in this issue of the lightening, lightening of the discourse. And I would even call it uh, L-I-T-E, like beer, light. So it, it is also a little bit of a case of a kind of trying to not be as sober, in fact, and as fully, fully uh, precise. And the notion of the blurriness, uh, and um, I think this is where I would connect that presentation with, um, uh, with, the, with the last session. Uh, about the issues of proportion versus blurriness. In fact, whatever remains, remains maybe in proportion um, in that sense. But the light forensics were, were kind of an opening um, in, in that sense because uh, of this also another concept raised in that panel of the reversal. Uh, I think we spoke about a couple of times about the reversal of the practice back to the, to the discourse. And there were a couple of questions about it. Um, I think that... Um, in, in, uh, in, in Joanna's uh, presentation on, on the union, the, this is what I saw actually in that presentation, is that it basically demonstrated that the space has not just been the result of behavior, right? but the change of space changed behavior. And if, if I, accepting the switch from behavior to performance, uh, we could use the old word and the new word at the same time. But that is really an example of um, whether that practice of space of actually designing space and aesthetizing it is in fact already in practice. 
only in a negative way, to prevent rather than allow. Right? So one could call that, our, that aspect sort of the infrastructure of prevention uh, and a practice of prevention in, in say, in design and urban, urban planning. Um, and also the, 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 the second thing that there on the, on the, 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 the notion of, the, of taking things away, like in the, in the tape that Susan, Susan wrote, uh, and the idea of the, the repetition of the repetition of the, of the non-existent uh, and uh, as being an evidence, I think it gets into that uh, on a much micro level uh, in, in the sense that that practice again of recopying and recopying the emptiness ends up being a practice which can be taught, in fact, which can be learned. Uh, which then brings me um, to an issue, the whole issue I think that can be addressed which is the issue of education, possible education, and possible curriculum, and in fact, what would it be? What would we do, in fact, in that in those situations, if we would do anything in that sense, um, in a kind of, uh, uh, say, learning situation? Uh, I think there was also a concept of schooling. Schooling was perhaps a better word of than than education, uh, in that sense, more participatory, and maybe. This is exactly where the participatory in the forensics aesthetics uh, can then influence the actual proportions of the aesthetics and what we're actually talking about. Um, I also like, um, um, I mean, the, uh, the, the entire thing about mental mapping and, um, and, and Sarah's and uh, Amber's um, project is, um, I think, uh, it is really a fascinating uh, device, and I think that uh, what would actually what fascinated me there is the not just the minimal amount of uh, effort, in fact, to, to actually make make the drawings, but in fact that that can even be part of schooling. In fact, to actually work on the most minimal way and the most um, I don't, almost childish in a, in a certain sense, but in a way to kind of give the information and leave some information out. So we understand that, that that process is really, really, um, at least for me, that really worked really well. So in a way, one could even have a workshop on how to do that, not just conceptually, but also technically, in that sense. You know, how to have this line not be straight, but be, be different. And, um, and uh, so in a way, I think that, that is, that is that was our second, second one, going backwards again. Uh, going back to materials, uh, it was also, I would say, um, uh, interesting to kind of start from the, say, the most specific fact, the most material, and kind of go towards uh, the future. Now, if we go back, if we think of those materials and those presentations as animated uh, by a larger, larger questions uh, of the entire uh, forensic aesthetics direction, and practice. Um, I would say that um, something that really s struck me a lot, especially in, um, in, uh, in, in, well, in all of them, in, um, let's start from Jorge's um, work, is that we afterwards we discussed about um, this thing that uh, Slava Zizek says, that there is always a space between a tuna and a can from the inside. No matter how tight the can is, there is always a space. And uh, in fact, we discussed afterwards whether there is a proportional proportion between the thickness of latex, between the tech, very technical issue, and what material can be recorded. And apparently there is no such specific thing, but there is a common sense of what particular tool can be used. In that sense, I think uh, to kind of um, uh, go on the, on the line of common good, so the common good, in fact, may be able to be measured in that sense, but at the same time, it will always be connected to the common sense. So we have this kind of dichotomy of common good versus common sense. Common sense goes towards, in my opinion, towards light forensics, right? Because it's a kind of a sensical thing. Not sure, not sure how thick the latex is, but the the, the other one is far more scientific. Um, and and to kind of uh, really uh, comment on. Um, on Normans, um, actually, um, it was like a, it was great actually seeing that sample and the whole thing about labor and who, what kinds of layers can be taken off, and um, and Eve's um, 
Eve's um, uh, uh, sort of practical discourse of preemptive, preemptive uh, protection. So, um, and yesterday's event, of course, uh, which should kind of come back as the now is the last one, but enriched with all of these comments, could be discussed. So I would leave it like that on the table, and um, perhaps, perhaps somebody would like to take on it.